Morning. It's the Monday. Today is March 16th, and I hope everybody had a good weekend. Today we'll be following up on that 29-inch board tracker, and I will be popping in from time to time to talk about a few things of what you might be looking at. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it and see what's happening with Peak Cycles. Everything trimmed down. Getting ready to sleeve and cap off the cantilevers there to the seat stays, and then we'll move on to the chain stays. Gonna finish this up on this rainy day. One down, and one to go. One long stick, all capped off. Hands here, sleeved. Keep it moving. Two down, and chain stays to go. And we are in for the home stretch. Got the cantilevers capped off there, and sleeved into the stays. Stays capped off. I'm not gonna tack this in quite yet as we still have to shape the dropouts based on the shape of the chain stays here. That's what we're going to tackle next. So this is what I'm going to go with on cutting this dropout. This is the before, this is after. I went ahead and ran the chain stay with the dropout on the jig and cut that line, which is where the stay pretty much lands. This here, I just basically took a bottom bracket and traced it, and then drew a straight line right there. You can see I'm going to cut this right here, and we'll give that a look. Boom. Go ahead and mount these up. Got the dropouts in. And the seat stays. The cantilevers just being held in by magnets right now. But we just want to get a good look and make sure we're good upstairs before we move on to the chain stays. Looks good. Moving on. First chain stay cut and capped. Grind it smooth. Get ready to throw this right up here. Let's give it a shot. Okay. You know what that is? That's a new chain stay. You know why? Because I screwed this one up. Cut it too short on both ends. I don't know how I did that, but it happens and is part of the reason for the delay on getting this video done. Left the shop last night, not happy, but here we are, new day, and we're gonna handle it. Gonna jump in here and I wanted to follow up on the fact that I said I don't know how I cut that piece too short. And after thinking about it for a bit, I know exactly what happened. <laughs> Basically, when I went to cut and cap the end of the stays, I marked where I wanted the cut and worked on the first side. And when I was working on the first side, I decided I wanted to move where it meets the triangle up just a little bit. So I cut and capped it, everything good. Went to the second side and by the time I got to the second side, I forgot I moved it up. So I went with the original mark, cut it, and that's how that ended up being too short. As for how it ended up being too short coming in is what I like to do is I take a measuring caliper like this, 
and I measure the inside area of where the stays meet the dropouts. And then I slide the caliper down to where the stays meet the triangle to make sure that the two stays are running parallel with each other and not tapering in or out. In this case, my stays were tapering out, which means they needed to be trimmed where they meet the triangle to pull them in. Did the trim, no problems there. The problem is, is I was having issues with the coping meeting on the second side. And by the time I got the coping to fit tight and look good, I grind it off too much. That's how it ended up being short. It was a long day. I was tired. I was not happy. And <laughs> you have shop days like that. Let's keep it moving. Okay, we got the new piece in and coped. Looking good here. Going to cut the end and not too short this time. <laughs> One of the hardest parts about doing this again is getting the radius the same. That's why I was not happy last night as doing these compound bends and re-rolling and re-bending to get it to match is not an easy task. Normally you are working with one piece of steel, rolling it longer than you need, cutting it in half, and then you've got matching ends. In this case, I had to do a single stay to match an existing stay, and I pulled it off, but it's a headache. Anyhow, moving on. Let's cut this off, cap it, and get it done. Going to jump in here again to follow up on the fact that I said you work with one long stick to create both stays. And what I meant by that is anytime you're working with the frame and you're working with rolled pieces that are duplicated on each side, in this case it's the chain stays, a lot of times it's the cantilevers, is you will cut a stick long enough for both sides. Roll it, cut it in half, and then you've got matching radiuses. In this case, I needed to do one and match it to one I already had on there. I didn't want to do both all over again, so I took my chances to do another one to match. Like I said, I pulled it off, and sometimes you just, you just have days like that. Keep it moving. Wanted to get a shot of this rear dropout after being hand cut and tacked on the frame. I'm very pleased with that. Remember when you hand cut dropouts, a famous artist once said, there are no mistakes, only happy accidents. Keep that in mind when fabricating. Bob Ross, one of the best. Fabrication is no less an art. I want to follow up on that Bob Ross quote and what I meant by that is whether you've been fabricating for a long time or just starting, there are no mistakes. Fabrication is an art. Just roll with it. If it doesn't work out or it doesn't look right, you'll know. <laughs> Most importantly, keep it fun. Here we are, one of my favorite parts is that first lick on the ground with the wheels. I personally have never had any issues by pulling the frame off the jig and doing a mock-up on the ground. I personally like to do that as I like to make sure everything looks good from over the top, all around with the wheels, everything's straight and looks good. The tacks to me are plenty strong as long as you're not banging the frame around and put it back on the jig, tighten everything down and no issues. Anyhow, let's go ahead and take a look. First looks at the board tracker. Dual 29.3s. Very pleased. Back wheel slid right in there. Go ahead and weld this up. Gotta say, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I gotta build one for the client. <laughs> I'm kidding. 
I actually did show that to the client since, and I told him the same thing. He was like, huh, what? That's not mine? And I was just joking over the fact that I wanted to keep that one. And I'd love to build one for myself, just don't have time, so that's his. At the end of the day, I popped in a few times today and showed you that you don't always have those picture-perfect days. And if you're just getting into this, you're going to learn quickly that there will be obstacles and bad days, and you just got to keep moving forward. Keep it fun. That's pretty much going to wrap it up. Hope you enjoyed today's version of what's happening in the cycles. And until next time, make it a killer day!